Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle Barra. I've been a personal stylist for 25 years. I now help people like you build capsule wardrobes that mix and match easily. So today I want to talk to you about how to avoid feeling frumpy. Now the tips that I've got for you today, you can take or you can ignore it, it's entirely up to you. But so many of you have told me that you feel like you're stuck in a rut, you feel like you wear the same thing over and over again and you've kind of lost your way a little bit. So I've got some gentle ideas here today that you might want to apply to your wardrobe to help you feel more confident and feel much better about yourself as well. So before I go on, I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody who is liking, subscribing, commenting, sharing. Please keep that coming because it really helps me bring more content to you. I listen to every single comment and I make notes of every single comment. Hence why I'm doing this video today. This has been requested several times. So let's get started. So there was a recent survey done by a university that said that within seven seconds, people make 11 assumptions about you. And that's a lot of assumptions, isn't it? So I wonder what they are and wonder what those assumptions are. But obviously your first impression is really, really important. But I don't think that's the most important thing. I think the most important thing is that you feel good for yourself. It makes me really, really sad when I hear women saying that they feel invisible. They feel like no, people ignore them, that they're just, they're just in the background and nobody's taking any notice of them anymore. You should never feel like that at any age whatsoever. So I just wanna say, quickly before I go into all, all of my advice today. If you see someone walking down the street and you like what they're wearing, please tell them. You never know it might make their day. Now, one of the biggest reasons that I see women coming to me for either help or I see comments on this channel and elsewhere is where people have lost their way. It is so common. If I had a pound for every time people come to me and they say that they feel they feel like everything's not quite right anymore. You know, they used to have it together. Maybe they had big corporate jobs or, you know, they always felt very confident in their body shape and in, in their style. And then work commitments, family commitments, lots of things get in the way, your body changes and then you kind of feel lost. And it's such a common occurrence, and I think it's incredibly sad. So the little tips that I've got for you today, I want you to kind of maybe kind of have a look at them. Also, if you haven't done it before, I know some of you have because you've been telling me, open up a Pinterest board and pin styles you like, because that should be just about what you like. Very much about us finding your happy place again, which is super important. So if you've lost your way, just kind of have a little look at these suggestions and try and incorporate them into your wardrobe. Gently does it, don't, it's not gonna happen overnight, but just gentle changes because it shouldn't be something massive that feels uncomfortable, where you feel like you're kind of dressed up in a way you wouldn't ordinarily. It's a case of us finding a way for you to find your happy place again, because you just probably lost it or put it somewhere on the way. Now, one of the most common mistakes, and I've said this several times, that I see people make when they maybe have lost their way a little, and usually it's because uh, their body's changed a little bit, and that is that they start to wear really baggy clothes. Now, the problem is with this, often you're swamping yourself in fabric and it just adds more fabric. Now, don't get me wrong, I totally understand why you do it totally understand why you do it. It feels comfortable, it kind of feels like it hides those areas, but does it make you feel good? Does it? Really question whether it makes you feel good. If it does, ignore me. But if you're just doing it because it feels safe, then I really want you to kind of think twice about that. Now, if you're gonna go for anything, you know, I always think the tea dress works really well. It's kind of comes down the V, usually comes underneath the bust and then gently skims out. Anything that kind of skims the body rather than absolutely swamps it in baggy clothing is gonna be so much better for you. Not only is it shapeless, so it kind of it kind of gears towards that kind of laziness kind of feel, but also it adds bulk. So there's two reasons why that oversized baggy kind of look clothing really doesn't work it won't I promise you it won't make you feel good or the vast majority of you anyway 
Now another mistake which I see quite commonly as well as jersey, particularly jersey head to toe, so let's say for example t-shirts and then leggings. What jersey does is it clings to all the wrong places and then it ha adds loosely and often saggy in places where you aren't so, you know, where, where you aren't so big maybe. And that it, a it kind of it doesn't look very nice and b it doesn't do what you're trying for it to do so often people wear big baggy t-shirts because they kind of want to cover up again but it will use quite often it will cling to the tummy but then still be baggy and loose elsewhere and the same with the kind of leggings now i know if you've got great legs there's no reason why you shouldn't show those pins off but the best way to do it is to create balance. So have a top that kind of skims the body, but then maybe straight leg or wide leg trousers. So you're kind of coming in here, but then you've got a top that's maybe skims over that tummy. I'm only using the tummy as an example because I know that's often an area that people struggle with most. Because the thing is, if you're not wanting to look frumpy and you're wearing these kind of jersey outfits, it's not going to really do your confidence that good because I can imagine that you've kind of got gone to them for a safe option so let me know in the comments what you think about that I'd really like some more feedback on that but I know from working with people that's come up quite a lot so I think of trying to avoid those baggy t-shirts warm with leggings because I know they might be comfortable don't get me wrong if you're gardening or you're doing something around the house wear whatever you like but if I'm I'm not talking about that today I'm talking about trying to help you not feel frumpy and I think if you're going to try and feel your best then kind of applying some little techniques to kind of enhance how you feel and enhance your wardrobe would help you feel better. Now another one which I see people resort to quite a lot is elasticated waist, kind of quite baggy three-quarter length sort of trousers that hit sort of somewhere above the ankle. Now again I can kind of see why people do this because it's easy, they feel like they can kind of put different types of shoes on with them and I think maybe in some instances they come out but they do look quite frumpy. So if you're going to go for something like that I would go for something that's got maybe a little bit more structure to it. So either a tailored pair of trousers or even a pair of jeans if you want to go for that three quarter length look. But try and avoid these elasticated baggy things that go straight the way down because they don't you know particularly um, a lot of women um, who are in the older age group where I mean I'm five foot three and a half so a lot of us aren't particularly tall so that kind of cut where it comes just above the ankle cuts your at your legs in half as well and it kind of makes your legs look shorter so I'd avoid it if you can and I would go for full length either straight leg or wide leg trousers they're much more, um, also the straight leg and the wide leg trouser are much more modern at the moment than those kind of three quarter length uh, elasticated waist styles, which do look a little bit dated. This is another common one, and you're going to hate me again, I know, but it's long cardigans. So cardigans that are either belted, that come sort of, and when I mean long, I mean come down sort of past the hip. Now, I understand why sometimes you want something like that, because you just want something you want to wrap around yourself in the winter, keep yourself warm, if you're sitting around the house, whatever. I say wear whatever you feel comfortable in. But again, like I say, that's not what today's about. Today's about you not feeling frumpy. And those type of cardigans look frumpy on pretty much everybody. So they just add bulk where it's not necessary. They kind of hang, sometimes they're a little bit stretched and they sort of hang down from here and then they hang heavy at the bottom, particularly if they've got pockets. And it's not a particularly flattering style. So if you like cardigans, I would go for something that sits no lower than the top of the hip and something that sits a little bit closer to the body. So it doesn't have to be really tight, but just sort of skims the body. Or alternatively, look at blazers, you know, even relaxed blazers, something Thing in kind of linen or cotton but avoid those cardigans that come right the way down and just add like this again this bulk and they just sort of look quite drab um, definitely look for something else an alternate to those now another one that I see quite a lot and I sort of feel looks quite dated and that's kind of like floral leggings or leggings or work pants with crazy patterns on 
it never looks good. Now let me explain why. If you are somebody who is worried about certain parts of your body, then it, it just stretches in those areas. So that flower that's maybe here then looks bigger on your bottom or whatever it is. And I also feel that they are quite dated and it's, there are certain garments which age you essentially. And so if it effectively can make you look quite frumpy. Now, if you like leggings, absolutely go for leggings, but I would go for the simple block colors rather than the ones with the crazy patterns on because they can look kind of quite frumpy and dated. Now, I've sort of mentioned this one before earlier, but sweatshirts that are really baggy. Now, they're one of the worst things that you can kind of wear because again, it see what sweatshirts and leggings scream to me and these big long cardigans, any of these things really, it just screams to me somebody that's just looking for comfort and isn't thinking about kind of their style or how they want to look, right? Now, if you say to me, oh, I love my baggy sweatshirt and I wear it wherever and I style it up with this, great brilliant it's not a hard and fast rule but i think those baggy sweatshirts worn with maybe sloppy trousers or worn with um leggings it it looks like you you're trying to cover up and that you kind of given up on making an effort now again i'm not saying to you that you have to make 100 percent effort for anybody but if you don't want to look frumpy and you want to look put together then i would avoid those big baggy sweatshirts as well Next up is jeans. Now with jeans, I would avoid anything with too much fuss on it. So, you know, I don't know, maybe it's got lace patches on it or it's got embroidery on it or it's got like some sort of patches or paints or logos or anything like that. It kind of looks really dated, which again, in turn, kind of looks quite frumpy, I think. It looks like um, it's something you've bought years ago. And I think part of the problem with that is if it looks like it's something you've bought years ago, then it looks like you might not have been um, wanting to make an effort for a while. So that's kind of where that train of thought comes from. But you know, so just go for kind of simple, I think indigo denim in a straight leg works for pretty much everybody. So I think, you know, the standard Levi's 501, medium waist, straight leg, dark indigo jeans. So it doesn't have to be that brand, but those, that type of cut style and color works best for pretty much everybody. And it's a great base point to then have everything else off of. So if you want to wear something a bit more interesting somewhere else, you can can either dress them up or dress them down you can wear them a breton top or a white shirt or you can wear them with something really interesting you know maybe an interesting piece of knitwear but just try and keep it quite simple because those kind of um patterns it looks quite 80s and it looks quite dated and so therefore it kind of might look like you haven't kind of changed your wardrobe for quite a while Last but not least, it's t-shirts with like little embroidered flowers on and everything. Now, I don't have anything against these per se, and sometimes pre-loved or vintage, they can look lovely, but they can also look quite dated because they're often sold in the shops that are aimed at an older demographic. So it kind of puts you very firmly in that demographic. Now, if it's something you like, absolutely go for it. But those kind of embroidered, maybe they've got a little bit of sequins on them or a little bit of embroidery, can look quite frumpy and can look quite dated. I would go for a simple Breton stripe or something um, with maybe a trimming on the neck, a v-neck or something really simple. So I hope you found that helpful. Please like, subscribe, tell your friends, let me know in the comments what else you'd like to see. Also, let me know what you think about everything I've said today. You know, if there's something you don't agree with, I absolutely, you know, always welcome any type of feedback about the content I know, because I know some of you will be watching this, you'll go, but I love that. If you do, go for it, but let me know. Also, let me know um, how, how helpful you found this. Let me know what else you'd like to see. I am going to do a video on Pinterest and how to create a Pinterest board, because I know a few of you have said to me that you would find that really helpful, because I often say open Pinterest boards to get inspiration. Also, head over to my website and download my free capsule wardrobe guide. You can use that to fill it out. It's got lots of different questions in it, and you can use it to fill out while you're changing your wardrobe. So you can kind of help pin down how you want it to be and what changes you want to make.
So have a wonderful week wherever you are and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.